All right, seventh grade, you guys get the short video this week. Uh, I'll try and keep this uh, certainly under 10 minutes uh, and hopefully uh, maybe closer to six or seven minutes. Sample space is the vocabulary word. It's also the title of the section. A sample space is just the list of possible outcomes. That's it. And you can make the lists in two ways. In a table, like we'll just see on this page, or in a tree diagram, like we'll see in the next page. So you could see here in example one, how would we make a sample space showing all the outcomes if we rolled two number cubes or two dice? It's real simple. You just write all the outcomes of one along the top and all the outcomes of the other along the side. Now this is two dice, so it's one through six for the one and one through six for the other. Then you just pair each and every outcome together. This is very, very easy. It might be a little bit time consuming, but it is very easy. So one, one, two, one, three, one, four, one, five, one, six, one, and so on. And this right here, this table is known as the sample space for writing the outcomes of rolling two number cubes. If you counted up all these outcomes in here, all these ordered pairs, you would see that there are 36 of them. So you can use a sample space to calculate a probability because it shows you all the outcomes, which is your denominator. It says, find the probability here of rolling at least one three. So how many of these have at least one three? Well, this whole column does. One, two, three, four, five, six has at least one three. And this whole row has at least one three. One, two, three, four, five, six. But, and this is a very, very big but, big but, big but, haha, chuckles. Don't double count this one. This three three is in the row and the column. Don't double count it. It's not there twice, so you don't want to count it twice. So if you counted these all up, not counting this one twice, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, skip it, nine, 10, 11. The probability of rolling at least one three is 11 out of 36. 11 of these 36 outcomes have at least one three. Quick check number one here says, give the sample space for tossing two coins, find the probability of getting two heads. This is going to be super easy. If I could just get this to like line up in the shot here. There we go. Two heads, that's gonna be easy. Our table is gonna have heads, tails along the top for the first coin, heads, tails down the side for the second coin, and now we just pair them up. We would have heads, heads, tails, heads, heads, tails, tails, tails. There's our sample space. Very, very simple. A lot easier than the die one that had 36. This one only has four. What's the probability of getting two heads? How many of these four outcomes has a double heads? Only that one. Probability, heads, heads, one out of four. So there's the first answer showing the sample space. There's the second answer. You can see it says right here, you can also show a sample space by using a tree diagram. So not a table, but a tree diagram. Each branch of the tree represents one choice. Suppose you're going to travel on a river. You have two choices of boats. You could take a kayak or a rowboat. You can go upstream on three smaller streams, north, northwest, or northeast. How would we write our sample diagram using a tree diagram? First, we choose our boat, kayak or rowboat. So there's our two options there. The next thing we have to choose is our stream. And there are three options, all right? North, northwest, or northeast. So each of these gets three branches. The kayak gets three branches, north, northwest, northeast. The rowboat gets three branches, north, northwest, northeast. If you go from beginning to end, that gives you an outcome. So we could have kayak north, kayak northwest, kayak northeast, rowboat north, rowboat northwest, rowboat northeast. How many outcomes are here? One, two, three, four, five, six. If we pick a trip at random, what's the probability of getting kayak going north? Well, how many of these six outcomes say kayak north? Only that one. Northwest, northeast is not the same as north. They were asking about directly north. Just one. One, you can't see it, but one out of six. That's it. One out of six. So what we're doing here is using sample spaces to calculate outcomes. Quick check number two says, suppose a canoe is added as another choice. Draw that tree diagram. 
piece of cake. So we still start with kayak, we still have our rowboat, but now we're adding canoe. Now we're adding canoe. And now we need our three branches for the directions off of each one of these. So it's north, northwest, northeast, north, northwest, northeast, north, northwest, northeast. So what are our outcomes? Kayak north, kayak northwest, kayak northeast, rowboat north, rowboat northwest, rowboat northeast, canoe north, canoe northwest, canoe northeast, nine outcomes. What's the probability of selecting canoe at random? Nine outcomes. We're choosing one of these nine outcomes at random. The probability they want is, what's the probability we get a canoe? Well, how many of these have a canoe? It doesn't say anything about direction. How many have canoe? Three of the nine do. Probability of canoe, three out of nine, or one third. There's that answer. This was part B, and this sample space here was part A. All right, so we're gonna end it right there. There's one more thing in this section right here, the counting principle. We'll get to that next week. Like I said, I wanted to keep this short for you guys. Hope you had an awesome week. Catch you later. Pound it up. So